Well, welcome to another edition of Rim Shots with Sean here on East Link TV. And uh, we have a very interesting guest tonight. He's uh, You're going to notice that he's not uh, from the side of the pond, but you know what? He's going to be spending some time over here. We have Mr. Chris Ricketts. How are you, sir? Good evening. How are you? Yeah, lovely to meet you, Sean. Thank you. Fantastic. So what part of the world do you live in or reside in? Uh, I'm in Portsmouth down in, uh, down in, in the UK. I suppose it is sort of across from you, not necessarily down, but you know what I mean. So, yeah, uh, Portsmouth, the UK, great awesome. to be here. Thank you. And you and I were connected by a mutual friend. It's funny how this music business works. You know, you think that it's very big, but it's actually not as big as what you think because we have a mutual friend in Ian McLaws who uh, made the connection and informed me you were coming over here to play, and we'll get into that in a minute. Um, how how did you meet? Uh, how did you meet him? Do you know? Do you know what it's 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 one of those weird things that we're in this sort of wonderful new age where we can sort of be connected but not connected in terms of the sort of the World Wide Web and what where we throw out our music. You sort of as a as a musician, as somebody that's sort of a, a songwriter, you you throw your music out there and hope that it sticks with somebody. And Ian's one of those people that he did did do that with, and he sort of reached out to me and said, "Look, I work over here. If you ever need any help, let me know." And sort of. We just got talking online, but was, there's sort of a mutual appreciation and love for what, what we do and understanding of what we do, because there's, believe it or not, there's not a huge amount of us out there in terms of musicians that are working in terms of the songwriter business. And so it's really refreshing to hear and meet people like Ian, who can obviously put me in contact with yourself and, and help out. Um, and that's one thing I'm noticing within this tour is the, the amount of willingness and generosity and kindness that people are willing to help you out with is, is something that I'm certainly witnessing at the moment. So yeah, uh, that's how I met Ian. It depends on what part of Canada you're in, but we'll leave that for another day. <laughs> um, so, okay. So for starters, so uh, Ian sends me the info. I look at what you're doing and you're pegged as, I, I saw everything from a folk singer to a sea shanty singer to, you know, Explain to my viewers exactly where you fit in the whole niche in, of, of, of the music business. Um, my love and my passion is sea shanties and sea songs. Um, and I wanted to be a sort of, I suppose, let's we're going sort of back to roots here in, in terms of sort of where, where uh, I wanted to make a living out of music. And I, at, when I, as a young, naive teenager, I was willing to do anything to, to get that. And I sort of ended up, um, on cruise ships I suppose is where I was and I was entertaining and I, I went on to my first ever cruise ship with <laughs> with sea shanties and sea songs uh, which I thought were the were the epitome of entertainment and I loved them because I had such a love and passion for them but I was soon to quick and realize that not everyone had that same passion or that same love for these songs and so I was very much in the deep end of learning learning what it is that I needed to do in order to be an entertainer. And I suppose over the years, I spent six years on boats. Over the years of that, I found a, a niche and a love for entertaining, but I also had this love for sea songs and shanties that never went away. And they've allowed me to be where I am. And I suppose there's there's a there's a there's a fine line now and there's a blurred line between being an entertainer and being a folk singer. But I I think it's a it's a good line and I'm trying to find the 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 balance between the two at the moment, I suppose. So have you been to have you been to Halifax before? I went last year, but I went there as a as a tourist. Um, I was playing at the Fundy Shanty Festival, which is where I'm heading back to this year. A wonderful place, full of a wonderful community in St Martin's in New Brunswick, and um, they invited me back. And I thought, why not try and make a thing of it? Um, but when I came over last year, I I'd hooked up and met at Ottawa Folk Festival many moons ago. Um, I think around about 2016 possibly even before I met up and I was doing a sea shanty workshop and there was a gentleman stood at the back of this this workshop and I sang this song of a, of a Canadian band um, called Boston St John's which is a wonderful song it wasn't necessarily a shanty but it's something that I wanted to perform to the crowd because it was such a lovely song something I felt I'd just been away on boat so I was going away it's a song about leaving family and friends behind and at the back of this crowd was this gentleman who came and spoke to me afterwards and said, yeah, by the way, I know the guy that wrote that song. He'd be really happy that you've done this. And it was Sean McCann um, from Great Big Sea. Right. And last year, I, I happened to be travelling over. I saw that he was at, at the Carlton in Halifax just before, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to book myself into this concert. I'm going to go reunite with him and have this conversation, two shantymen together, having this conversation about... Um, the wonder and beauty of these songs and the community building that they have 
um, and the ability to build community that they have, which has been seen through TikTok. <laughs> uh, but it's been a it's been around a long long time before that as well. And I think many people that are involved with the shanties know that. But the TikTok thing highlights it and shows it in its full glory. I think. So in in Halifax, and actually we're we're I'm not going to say eclectic. There's a whole like a number of different scenes. Great Big C came over as a pub band in the '90s, and that they kind of get their start. They played, you know, the lower deck and what have you here. And, um, yeah. So you're going to find, you know, I, I know you're playing the Carlton, but you're going to find a lot of that in this town. I, I I play in the scene. I play more band stuff, and um, but you'll find a lot of that. And even when you're just, if you have any time to kind of mill around, you're going to find an awful lot of that type of music here in Halifax. Yeah, I mean, as I mean, my my main day job over here in the UK is a teacher, and I don't get many days, and especially with this this huge tour. I think between the second and the twenty first, I've got zero days off. Um, but I, I I land on the thirty first in Halifax, and the reason for that is that I get a couple of days to then enjoy the the town and the city again. I loved it so much last time I was there, and I know there's such a such an eclectic mix of sort of live music there that I can just enjoy for my two or three days of holiday that I'm going to get this year, and that's that's the time I'm going to take to that. So if you're playing from the 31st of July anytime, like let me know and I'll I'll be there. Yeah, we and we can certainly hook you up with some places to go when you're here. Um, so we're going to take a quick break, break here, wake break here on Eastlink Community TV. We're going to be back with Chris Ricketts, and we're back after this. Welcome back to Rim Shots with Sean here in Eastlink TV. And uh, as we said it in the intro. Chris is coming from the UK. He's going to be spending uh, about three and a half weeks over here. And uh, he's going to be making stops in New Brunswick and Halifax. He was here last year. How? Um, so you 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 did the the festival last year. You got asked back, but in terms of setting your itinerary up this time, how did you go about doing that? Did you have some help with that? Did you do it yourself? How did, how did that how did that take place? It's it's really interesting. I mean, I, this is this will be my fifth or sixth time over in Canada, and I've usually done sort of more over Toronto, Quebec way, where I've had concerts and w- the beauty of coming and traveling to, to Canada as a country is the fact that there's a willingness to help and support everyone and anyone that anyone comes across within the within the community wherever I've been in Canada this is my experience I may be wrong you said earlier a little bit about that but I may be wrong but um wherever and everyone I've met there has will it has this willingness to help and I, I and I've thrown out emails. It's all self. It's all. It's a self book tour. Is what I'm doing. Um, but it's through connections that I've made whilst being there. And I, I've thrown out a couple of other ideas. Um, and I've thrown out emails to other venues to say, look, would you have me? Here's what other people have said. Um, I'm willing to work with you to put on a show and put on an event. And that's the idea is that we're going to put on a show and put on an event. It's not going to be a one off concert where I'm there and I'm there just just that one time. The idea is I want to build something from that. I want to build a community. I want to come back, and I don't want it to be a one-time thing. And um, the support I've had from everyone is is uh, uh, completely overwhelming for me, and it's unbelievable. I had no idea that it would have the legs that it has now to 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 be what it is. I mean, I, from the second to the twenty-first, um, and from all over Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, I'm I'm playing in these all these wonderful places, and it's obviously I've gone out there and I've asked for these gigs. But actually, it's the support and people that have allowed for them to happen, and the the the, the community, and the talking about what happened last year when I was in Canada at the Fundy Festival, and um, it's just the general kindness and generosity that I've seen from other people that have allowed this to happen for me. And so I just hope now that coming over there, that I get people in these venues and that people turn up to see to see what I hope is a is an ongoing show and an ongoing um, community building that we, that is what, what we want. Super. So you're, I know you're playing the Carlton in Halifax. Which is uh, uh one of uh, it's a great room right downtown, uh but part way up the hill. Obviously, if you've been you've been to Halifax before, you know where our, our downtown is uh, built on a hill. But um, great venue uh, on a really neat part of part of uh, Halifax on Argyle Street, where there's a lot of good nightlife and and what have you. Uh, where are some of the other venues that you're playing when you're here? Um, so in terms of Nova Scotia, I've got Campobello Fog Fest, which I think is over in New Brunswick, actually. Um, and then I hit the Fundy Shanty Festival with a couple of local breweries, which could be dangerous. Um, okay. So I'm at St. Andrew's Brewing Company on the 8th of August. So if you see me on the 9th, I'm, I'm going to apologise in advance. Um, I've got the Yarmouth Coal Shed Festival, um, which is in Nova Scotia. 
Um, Betty's at the Kitch in Nova Scotia, the Great Village Arts Centre, Geesborough Waterfront, um, New Glasgow Square Theatre, um, and the Dornaman Gallery in, in Bridgetown. So, and then actually the fun, what I'm really excited about is the, you know, the sort of the, the ferry crossings. Yeah, oh, uh, over to Prince Edward Island? Uh, from New Brunswick over to Nova Scotia. So, oh, okay. so Fundy Rose. Yeah, I'm doing a so, couple of shows on there. On the yeah, yeah. Over. It's a it's a fun yeah. point. So you go from St John, New Brunswick, uh, to right. I think it's Digby, if I'm not mistaken. Digby. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a great little town too, especially in the summertime when you're there. It'll be uh, very nice. It's uh, the weather's great, beautiful scenery. It's uh, you'll you'll really enjoy it. Um, so you know, is this is this literally like you know you you got your guitar in one hand, you got your knapsack in your other, and you're just how are you logistically moving around when you're here? Are you bringing anybody with you to help you, or are you just on your own? How are you doing it? <laughs> well, funny enough, I, I put out some feelers to friends and said, if you're about, if you fancy it, come on over. And I, I've, I'm yeah, I've got one friend I think coming with me for the first leg of the leg of the tour, um, but he has to leave to go back to work, unfortunately, in the UK. And then the second half is me in in a hire car driving around. Um, I was. I, <laughs> Funny story is I remember coming over last time when I was in Canada. I mean, I always have an issue with, I hate customs and I hate the going through the airport thing. Um, but I remember last time, sort of the guy asked me, I had all these, this luggage and he he couldn't have been quicker to get me out of the customs when he asked me why I was there. I said, I'm here to sing at a sea shanty festival. And he got me the trolley and went, there's your trolley, go that way. And I think he was terrified that I was going to sing a sea shanty at him um, in the airport. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. That's that's. I mean, I'm literally on my own for, for the majority of it. But it's like I say, I've never had a bad experience in Canada. I've always had the the generosity, kindness, and well, welcome back to Rim Shots with Sean. After some technical difficulties, I mean, you know what? We're we're you know we're we're, we're trying to sting a whole lot of things together here. We got a time zone thing. We got an internet thing. You know. Technology being what it is, you know, you always got to have your fingers crossed because you never know what's going to happen. Um, so here with Chris Ricketts on Eastlink Community TV or Eastlink TV, sorry, uh, Room Shots with Sean. And uh, you had mentioned going through customs and you had mentioned, you know, everybody when you come over to Candy, have a good experience. I think, uh, you know, we're, we're, we always get to, they, they joke around that we're the nice people. And I mean, most of Canada's like that. There's certain parts where you might go, you might feel something a little bit different, but. Uh, for the most part, you come into town and uh, it's a high five and away you go and nobody's crossing their arms. They just want to have a good time. Yeah, very much so. I mean, like when I worked on ships, uh, I had a very dear friend of mine who's now, he he, he lives over in Toronto. He's a Canadian, um, Canadian lad. And yeah, I mean, the sense of humor is there. I mean, it's yeah, I love it. I absolutely love uh, coming over. He's a very dear friend and will always be a very dear friend of mine. Um Gerson, even though he's a drummer, that's fine. Um, we'll let him off. <laughs> well, I'm a drummer yeah, I mean, too, so keep it down there, sir. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Um, like, I knew I'd put my foot in it at some point. That was the thing. Um, but like I said, I mean, like I've not had a bad experience, and like it's six or like I've been coming to Canada for a long, long time now. And it, but there's a there's a thing that keeps drawing me back, and it's the people. It's always the people, and it's always the the kindness. The, the generosity, the love, the warmth uh, that I def definitely get from audiences. Um, and, yeah, I don't witness that or see that anywhere else in the world, um, certainly not here in uh, the UK. Um, but then again, I, I'm using my school holidays as, a, as touring times um, the rest of the time I'm working. So maybe my my experiences of audiences is, is my year eight or nine class or sort of 13, 14 year olds telling me that uh, shanty music is not cool and that I need to f off i suppose is what we sometimes <laughs> get over here in the uk i mean it's 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 a battle we're fighting every day but we but we do it because we love it right sure and i mean again here uh, you know I'm, I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum and what i do i mean i i'm less of a a, a celtic kind of performer I, I played in the celtic band for 10 years but it's not you know my my i guess thing um now um and there's a scene for what i do and there's a scene for jazz here and there's a scene for blues but for the most part that whole i mean we're right by the sea for starters right And if you look in the history of halifax there's a long long history of exactly what you're 
you know, describing and what you sing about right here. And I mean, you can see it, feel it when you go down to the waterfront. Yeah, I mean, it's called the Maritimes, right? Right. <laughs> Which is exactly exactly that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've never been a proper sailor. I suppose I've never s- sailed on a sailboat to any length of time. A cruise ship doesn't really count. Um, but what I can do and what I have witnessed and what I have experienced is, is the joy of, that these songs bring to people in communities because they, they've got the co- easy calling response that you'd expect from a song and they're easy to join in with. And actually the messages within the songs are, are relatable to everyone um, about sort of spending time away from home, about caring for loved ones, about um, the troubles we have on a day-to-day basis. And, and that's what the songs offer. They're not necessarily the rudimentary, this is a song about the sea. They're about deeper things than that. And they they they, they have this resonant meaning to everyone that hears them. And I think that's what, where the popularity comes comes from it's the idea that anyone can join in no matter of where you're from who you are whether you've got money where you haven't got money um it doesn't matter who you are when you sing these songs because you're singing them and because you're enjoying them and it's because everyone can do it and i think it's the inclusivity with 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 this genre of music that's so appealing and it's what i love especially as a teacher i can sort of tap into that i mean i teach in, a, in an area in in the uk which is quite a deprived background in quite a deprived area and these songs anyone can anyone can do it and it's the fact that sometimes some people don't feel that they're good enough within music especially with our current curriculum they don't feel that they they should be entitled to have music as a as a source of joy but that's what these songs allow people to have i'd be interested to get your take on uh and nobody wants to talk about that you know two years ago where everything was shut down but i mean over here um you know, it, music was the thing that kept people going and, you know, they did it online or they did it however. And, you know, uh, my, my big fear was, is that people kind of were working together and that once everything opened up, people would go off and do their own thing. And that's kind of happened in a sense. What happened over there when, when everything shut down in terms of like, were you able to get access to music at what, the, what, the, what took place? Yeah. I think the same, th- the same thing happened. People supported each other. I think we're in this new era and this new, this new, age i suppose where we we're witnessing things that we've never seen before and never never had to endure before and i think endure is the, is the right word to use there and what what we saw was people mucking together whether it be their music whether it be their passion for the crocheting whether it be the, and what we saw was a more engagement online where people could really tap in and understand people's hobbies and, and engage with that i mean that's not necessarily music I think music took a took a hit actually during COVID. I think the cultures, our theatres certainly took a hit, and I think um, the funding certainly went downhill. And I th- I don't think we were prepared as a nation for for the level of um, of poverty that the arts was about to to witness and understand. Um, but one thing I will say with that is that when things did open up, the first thing we did as a nation was put on a concert. <laughs> which then shows the value of those arts. And um, I just think we, we've we got a lot of things to revisit and a lot of things to learn from COVID for the arts, especially in this country for that. So. Yeah, and, and sadly, I mean, over here it was the same thing, right? They would shut everything down, you know, and the music was the thing that was keeping everybody going. They shut it down, they wouldn't give it any help. And then there was a photo op with, uh, you know, one of our political leaders having a clubhouse sandwich on a on a deck of one of the restaurants. It's like, oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for spending that 10 bucks. Anyway, we won't go there because we're a family show. We don't want to get too negative. But so you're coming over yeah. here in uh, we'll, we'll call it six weeks. Where are my viewers going to find out about Chris Ricketts, his tour, where you're going to be when you're over here? Um, the best place is the website, I suppose, or the Facebook page. Um, I've been told by the people that are helping me over here in the UK that I need to be more active on my Facebook page because I'm rubbish at posting things. Um, but ricketsmusic.co.uk is the place to find all the dates. Um, fire me a message, you know, ask me, talk to me. That's the best way to do it because I, I'll, I'll, I'm more than happy to respond to any any messages that you've got because um, that's what it's about. It's about building this community. It's about meeting people. It's about gaining new friends and uh, learning learning from other people as well. That's what it's all about. So. No question. Well, you know what? Thanks a lot for doing this, Chris, here at Eastlink Community TV. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to connect with you when uh, when you're here. Oddly enough, when you're here, I'm doing a wedding in Ireland. So hopefully we'll be able to. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. It's kind of neat. But I mean, uh, mid, mid-August. So anyway, thanks a lot for doing this, my friend. And uh, we will uh, we will check out in the summer. See how it goes. 
pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much. Great, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Eastlink. We'll see you next week.